The Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, how your smile can affect your health. My first guest has nothing nice to say about the situation. We're kidding. On that, and that is Anastasia Turchetta. She's an expert on the topic. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. So now, what is your official title? When people ask you what you do, you're a health correspondent. What, what exactly are you? Well, I like to consider myself a health correspondent mainly for the public and our patients. I'm a dental hygienist of 22 years. All right. You think it's exciting. I mean, you're excited about it. I love dentistry. I mean, okay. I love how oral bacteria affects our entire health. It makes you feel so much better. And instead of people's perception of us as being the lecturer and pointing our finger at them, we should really be excited about how we can make you feel better. Okay, and so we, so people know your role. You speak to dental groups. You yes. also have this Anastasia's Hump Day happenings. Yes. Right, that you do every Wednesday. Yes. Educate the public. Is this for the public or for the dentist? It's for anybody who wants to understand what something in their life or in their oral health can affect them. So, for example, I just had one, somebody wanted to know about thumb sucking, and it was a two-year-old daughter they had, and they said, will this affect them now, or when should I be concerned if they won't stop? Um, other That's people right, I will, saw that one. Other people will ask about whitening. You know, I mean, okay. why are my teeth sensitive? And then other people will go off into another direction and say, my breath is bad, um, is this affecting my relationship, what can I do? Okay. So I find this fun and I try to make it really interesting for now, people. What did, now, dentists hire you to do what? What do you do with dentists? There's so many screenings out there for oral cancer and caries risk assessments that you, there's so many products too. So my job is to make sure that those products are customized to that particular practice. Okay. And then make sure that their verbal skills are the same way. So it flows back and forth. Okay, now let's, let's begin then with uh, the, the three areas that your smile affects your health. We'll begin there. Wow. Well, your smile affects your health, obviously, with your total health. So what we're dealing with is a small, everybody thinks it's just your smile, but you have to understand, I mean, what we see is basically the gateway or the gatekeeper to your entire body. Then it affects the way that people perceive you. I mean, I okay. get compliments on my smile. I mean, we were just talking about the smile. Do people compliment you on your smile? All the time. All the time. All the time. Guys? Guys. Is that right? So they're saying, yes. well, you have a beautiful smile. Well, thank you, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty I mean, good. It's just, but it's amazing how many people will notice a smile okay. and compliment you on it, and then they want to know in turn, how can I get my teeth straight? How can I get my teeth as well? Do they ask you a lot of questions about this? A ton. And i got to tell you a little secret, if I may. Okay, go ahead. I drink a lot of Starbucks, as you know. Yeah. And coffee stains your teeth. So a lot of people will say, well, how did you, how did you do this? How do you keep your teeth white? And drink it through a straw. So if you drink your coffee through exactly. a straw. Yeah. Now I heard the problem with for women drinking a, a you know coffee through a straw gives you those smoker lines, the wrinkles over your mouth. Well, how long are they putting their lips around the straw, Randy? Is that okay. that would be my next question? Okay. You also do. I mean, you are so into this health and oral hygiene. Yes. You say that if you're dating, you want the guy to. Put a swab. <laughs> is that right? I mean, you did say that. I don't that want to put words in your right. mouth. <laughs> but you did say that. Well, I, there's a test that we were we were teasing about because I get asked, um, what can we do? You know, as far as, especially when you see like Michael Douglas. You know, he he's been more of the the face, if you will, to come out with oral cancer. Okay. And a lot of our tests now for oral sex and oral cancer, yes, they're related. Well, they're related really? through HPV. And what is HPV? HPV is an STD. And yes, you can transmit HPV into the oral cavity or into your mouth. So is I that for a woman? So if a woman has bleeding gums or a problem with her gums, that's how that's going to happen. Is that the only way it's going to happen? That's not the only way it's going to happen. HPV is on your skin, on the surface of your skin. So if you and your partner um, transmit, you know, via oral sex, then yes, I mean, then you kiss each other. If your hands go into your mouth, it's just. It's now, by the way, you talked about this with Playboy. Is that right? I did, yes. So I shared some of the screenings that are out there because, again, we can't see anything. What amazes me is, and you know, obviously your smile affects your sex life. So they're targeting a lot of kids who are younger with Gardasil. Well, what about people like you and I who aren't 12 and 13 because we're, what, 30? Right, yeah, Andy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do we do? So, I mean, there are things that you can do, and one of the things is to get screened by your dentist. Okay, good. Okay, so it could affect your sex life. Okay, so I interrupted. Okay, so general health. Where, where, where do you begin? With what, what advice do you give people? Well, I would just say, you know what? I mean, if you're not feeling good, if your gums are puffy and you're afraid of pain, usually that keeps you away from the dentist. But I would encourage you, just knowing what is affected by your gums, to go to us. So if you have puffy gums... What, how's it affecting the rest of your body? 
Wow, like heart those disease, red, really? stroke, uh, diabetes, especially with diabetes. Diabetics generally, um, they've got a blood sugar count that they have to keep. They always go in like every three months, they've got a team of doctors. And we can see chair side whether or not their blood sugar control has been in control. I'll notice whether people's gums are bleeding more or if they're bleeding less. So they're, more, they're at more prevalence for, you know, the heart disease and the stroke. So it's amazing how So it's with all bleeding connected. gums, puffy gums, get it taken care of at the dentist. Absolutely. You guys can fix that. Mm -hmm. Come and in then and what visit. happens? They well, feel we manage better. it. They'll feel better. It's like maintenance for them. Okay. So okay. basically, I mean, if you're looking at heart disease, stroke, diabetes, especially a preterm birth, that's pretty big, you know, in the news a lot lately. Um, how women who are pregnant, usually in the second trimester, that they have the same bacteria that causes gum disease, is actually trans transmitted, if you will, into the placenta. And so some of these children. So if you're are, pregnant, go go to your dentist. Go see your dentist. Absolutely. Okay. It's all about prevention, but yet again, we've got to get that other perception. That you're going to feel better, and you'll have a healthy life. How important is a smile, in oh. your opinion? I think the smile says so much about I mean, you're somebody. in the business, so of course you think it's more, you know, the most, most important well, I mean, thing. let's face it. If you have a hygienist that would walk up to you and say, you know, I think your smile affects your health, and yet my smile is kind of funky, what are you going to think about that, Randy? Are you okay. going to trust me? Okay. You know, I mean, if I talk to you about tooth whitening, and I said, you know, we offer tooth whitening, but yet I've got chiclet-looking teeth. You know, candy corn looking teeth, are you going to really trust me? Okay. So I think our people will look at your smile first. They can see a smile from up to 300 feet away. And it's immediately contagious. So I think your career. Now you're now, now you so you notice men's smiles. Of course I do. So well, people out there. So if somebody has a bad smile, like when I say define a bad smile, by the way, not just crooked teeth. We're talking about an unhealthy looking smile. Unhealthy Is that what we're looking talking about? smile. Discolored yes. teeth, bad unhealthy. gums, what? Usually their gums will be really puffy, okay. um, and most often a bad smile, people know it because they don't feel good. They're right. very self-conscious. So you'll notice a lot of people, if they're going to smile, they'll be like this. You know, they don't want to, they'll hide their smile instead, or they won't smile at all. So that's pretty much a tip-off that they're unhelp, unhappy with it, and it's likely unhealthy. Okay. So then when they do, sometimes, yes, you will see either, I mean, you can see decay if it's very big, and most often if they let it go that long, it, it has Can been. you see decay because you're in this business? I mean, you're, you're at the grocery store, you're around, guys talking to you, you and know, you're going, boy, this guy's teeth are in bad shape. <laughs> there are times where I wish I did have my, my dental instruments and uh, to help somebody out, yes. You okay. Know, tongue scraper, toothbrush, whatever. I mean, you, you, you want to help people because you know they could just enjoy their life so, so much So what are the biggest mistakes people make with their, with their teeth, with their health, that, 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 you could, that should be turned around? Biggest mistakes they make? Or things they don't do that they should do? I think the biggest mistake that they make is knowing if they're taking prescription medications because that's another area that affects our smile. A lot of people take one or two or sometimes up to four prescription medications. Yeah. Or if you add that over the counter, it dries your mouth out. So a lot of people will say, well, you know what? I've got a mouth rinse that's going to help with bad breath. Or I've got a mouth rinse that's got fluoride in it and it's going to help my gums. In reality, the alcohol rinse that you're using Add that to a dry mouth, it makes your tissue. So you don't clean. like Listerine and those kind of things? I think Listerine has a place, but if you have a dry mouth, that's not the place. You've got to know your oral How do you health. know if you have a dry mouth? Well, you come in and see me. I mean, no, is it a feeling? I mean, do people know that I have a dry mouth? Most don't. It's amazing. Actually, you won't know that you have a dry mouth until up to, I believe it's 50% of salivary reduction. And how are you going to know? And how does the dentist take care of that then? Well, we do, I mean, we can look at your health history and see if it's a prescription medication or sometimes it's a, it's a health ailment. So we can make your mouth moist. There's products on the market that actually are salivary substitutes. I'll usually also recommend um, alcohol-free, different okay. things like that. So we can help people enjoy, if you will. And I'll say, you know what, take notice of your, of your saliva or your spit. Your spit should be like champagne. It should be clear <laughs> and bubbly. It should be. You're kidding me. I'm so not kidding you. Okay, so, okay, but... But with, uh, so you're saying if you have dental problems, and I just want to get this straight. Okay, so if you have dental problems like bleeding gums, mm -hmm. loose teeth, bad breath, puffy red gums, chances are you're saying that that is going to affect the rest of their body. Absolutely. Even um, for oral cancer, a lot of people don't realize some of that is either an earache, uh, difficulty swallowing, understanding that um, an ulcer that won't go away. But yet they might think it's, it's you know, some people get... Um, if they're eating too many tomatoes or orange juice, they sometimes will get an ulcer. Notice different kinds of things in your mouth. If it doesn't go away, there is something that's potentially causing that. How often do you guys catch an oral cancer? Not as often as I wish we would. By okay. the time we see oral cancer, it's usually in stage three, stage four. So the good news is come in to see us because we've got the technology now to identify it early. Okay, gum disease, what is it? 
gum disease is literally bacteria underneath your gums, and there's different kinds of it, that wreak havoc. It causes inflammation. So that inflammation is also affected to Alzheimer's disease. They're finding a link between that. It's also uh, directly linked to erectile dysfunction. I mean, this affects your life. It affects your mind. So when you come in early, we can prevent it and treat it. You're just going to be happier. So what are the obvious symptoms, by the way, of gum disease? Wow. Um, early, you're probably going to see it's no pain. It's painless. Okay. So likely you won't know that you have it. Um, another symptom could be bleeding gums. Okay. Not even so puffy at first, but bleeding so gums. So it's an infection under the gum line. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you'll notice maybe a change in your taste, or in extreme cases, your teeth get loose. You know, so you just you can't figure out what about what's hot going and cold on. sensitivity. Hot and cold sensitivity affects a lot of us. I mean, those of us have had ortho. Have you gone through ortho treatment? No. No. Okay. Well, um, just great teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I been through, you're blessed. What yeah. can we say? Um, a lot of people have either been through periodontal surgery or as we age, the gums tend to recede or pull back from the tooth, so you're seeing more of the root of the tooth. Okay. Um, depending upon um, what your nutrition or what your diet is, it's amazing at how that it can affect your sensitivity. So you have to pay attention to a lot of like uh, citrusy foods, um, acidic type of foods will affect the sensitivity. Now we've got products, chair side, that we can help you with. Um, and over the counter they have... What about lasers? I mean, I talked to dentists on my show. Mm -hmm. They could just zap the infection, hit that area, that bacteria, lasers and kill it. Lasers are phenomenal. Lasers so are phenomenal. They don't have to scrape so much anymore. Is that no, true? That is true. Okay. In North Carolina, though, as a hygienist, I'm, I'm not able to provide that. So Why in is California, that? the law. You can't use lasers? A hygienist. You go to not. jail for that? Well, you know, would you bail me out, Randy? That would be my I next one. I probably would, actually. <laughs> I, uh, I would probably have my license taken away from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, I'll you give know, you my card. Hey, I would give treatment to those in, in the jail. But, yeah, you would, you would probably have malpractice against that. I have that Ooh, so they can't use lasers at all. Well, that's a, that's a shame. I believe dentists can, but a hygienist cannot. But that's so. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about yeah. a dentist. So a dentist, though, a dentist, can use yes. a laser. That's what I was talking they about. They can use it. But, I mean, hygienists, this is part, becoming, especially out here in California, is starting to become more of the protocol to treat gum disease. So I think really? it would be great if we could just get it across, you know, the United States and in that respect have it where everybody can treat, you know, dentists and hygienists. Get trained. Get and trained. Yeah, get trained, get healthy, get happy. Now how does, help me understand how bad breath and the connection with what's going on in the mouth. I mean, what's causing the bad breath? What is the odor? The odor from? is, it could be either A, just from your tongue, because a lot of us have, uh, won't brush our tongue. So everything, you know, if... This is going to sound really kind of crazy, but you know, the tongue needs brush because it develops. You brush plaque. your tongue? Did you brush your tongue this morning? I did. You do really like with what? What do you do every day? I do um, a tongue scraper. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, your tongue is like a fingerprint. So some of us have <laughs> okay. um, more grooves, and some the tongue. It is seems like smooth. if you scrape it all the time, this is my my theory that it, it, you'll get like a callousy tongue, like a thicker tongue. Well, I mean, I mean, could that be? You've got to be careful. I mean, some people but you don't go see really that. Okay, but do you see that where people, I mean, is your tongue getting thicker over time by, because it seems like such a delicate Generally, area. No. no? No, I don't okay. see that. A lot of okay. people are, I just need to introduce tongue scraping to them. So it's, you know, from a plastic uh, device or there's... So everybody should scrape their tongue? Everybody should. Really? I mean, we get all kinds of Do you look down on a person like me that doesn't that. scrape their tongue? But I brush my tongue. I would not look down on you, but I'd be happy to share some products but, with you. But you, but what about brushing your tongue? Is that good enough? Not Brushing good enough? is good, but it's you know generally the toothbrush bristles don't have the actual grooves to get down there and grab the gnarly gauze and take it out. So brushing the tongue, what else? Brushing the tongue and some of the mouth rinses out there are literally targeted for it. So you are going to have either uh, products like OxyFresh, Breathorex is over the counter. Um, you also have Closis where it actually targets the bacteria that cause bad breath. Because as you know, I mean, it's also food related, um, health related, you could say GERD or acid reflux, okay. um, gum disease, oral cancer can also give you a bad taste in your mouth. And let's face it, if you want to be healthy and be happy and you want to make your relationship better, you're not going to get a How does this make your, your relationship better, <laughs> by the way? Because you talk a lot about relationships and you talk about sex and, and, and oral health. What's, uh, you know, give me your take on that. Well, everybody wants to be kissable. I mean, okay. well, you want to go for that kiss, you don't want to be dissed. Right. Okay. I mean, it, it makes a, it makes a big difference as okay. to somebody's breath whether, you know, like you you see somebody and we were talking about their smile. Well, yeah. you want them to come to you, not run from you, right? Okay. So, your breath is huge, you know, in a in a relationship. Yeah, in a relationship, but if somebody has bad breath, you know, it, it really can affect the relationship. But how do you bring it up? 
How, I mean, do you say, hey, you should see a dentist? I mean, this is a touchy subject, isn't it? So what advice do you give to the men that, or, you know, that you have to tell your partner they have bad breath? You know, I, this is what I would say to them. I mean, if, if they're coming in, usually it's the women, because women most often come in for more preventative care okay. than husbands. So they'll be, you know, putting something on the defensive is probably not what I would recommend. So what do you what do? What I would say okay. is, you know, honey, I mean, I love to kiss you. Uh, you're so kissable. You know bad news is great. coming when it starts out like this. <laughs> okay, you're a great guy, but... You know, I'm concerned about your health. And this is what <laughs> I know. Concerned about your health. Ah, take it okay. in, you know, concerned about your health because you haven't been to the dentist for a while and we know, you know, I just saw this great, brilliant program okay. on how your smile This woman Anastasia health. was saying. Yes. I mean, because, you know, if you have gum disease and, and bad breath is associated with that and I'm just noticing a difference in your breath when, when we're together. So I'd like to get you checked out to make sure that you're healthy so we can have a great life. Really? Okay. Have yeah. you ever had to give a speech like that to anybody in your life? Have yes, you? Yes, I have. You have? Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> blushing about it. Is it embarrassing? It <laughs> this poor guy, hopefully he will not see. Did he, do it? did he do anything about it, by the way? Yes, he did. Yeah. I mean, did it help? It's a difficult, I mean, you have to understand. Did it help? Coming at, yes, it did. <laughs> now was his breath so bad that all your friends? I mean, did, did all your friends notice his bad breath, or was it just you? Well, it was just me. I mean, let's face it. I mean, you know, I when you're dating somebody, it is apparent when you want to kiss somebody, you want to be more intimate with them. And for both people to enjoy, obviously, I mean, someone having bad breath, it could be a problem. And this ended up being a health problem. So is that a red flag for you, by the way? What's that? If you're dating a guy and, and early on he has bad breath, is that a big red flag? <laughs> is it? No, it is not a big red flag because, you know, I mean, it is preventable okay, um, okay. and it's something that you can take care of. And let's face it, I mean, I want that person to feel good too, you know? All right. Okay. So, so approach him that and, and then, okay, so bleeding gums, you know, all of those kind of things, medications. I want to make sure I'm going down the things that we could talk about. Uh, what else have we talked about? Well, as far as your smile, I mean, you have to look at it from your job perspective. I mean, when, okay. I, when I go into... Um, to go to get a job or if I'm going to be interviewed, they're going to look at my smile first, generally. You yeah. Know? And they're yeah. going to see, okay, does she take care of her smile? And I know that isn't the way society, you know, we, we wouldn't like to think that, but it really is image-based. So if you also want to be promoted, it's going to be based on Do you on see dent? I see dentists with bad smiles every once in a while. Yes, I do. Um, and, and here's the way I look at it. If, the, if their oral health is healthy and they elect not to whiten their teeth, I just want them to be healthy. So, I mean, if they're healthy and their breath is great and, you know, they're happy people, but some teeth, why not? Because the dentists I see, actually, they have healthy gums. They look like right. they have healthy gums. They may have crooked or, but, but if their teeth aren't responding to whitening, because some people can't, you know, they don't respond right. to whitening, Whether they could get veneers, or something. but isn't there dental paint now that they could do? Or no? Dental paint. There is some, you have to watch with the whitening materials. Okay. Uh, for example, I was walking through a mall and there was a kiosk. And this woman came up to me and she said, I've got a product to whiten your teeth. And I thought, sister, you have no idea. You've just opened a can of worms. Wow. She didn't know who she was she talking didn't, about. She didn't. I mean, because I don't think that people realize the, uh, you should be asking more questions. You just don't go over the counter and get a whitening product. Because A, is your mouth healthy? B, do you have composites already on your mouth or veneers because they're not going to change color? So what is going to change color and what are you saying to this person when they invest money? I mean, let's face it, everybody's, you know, watching their money these days. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to invest in something, I'd rather see it work. So I would, I'm very much biased towards coming into us for If a woman is watching this or a man and they're thinking, okay, I've got money to spend, you know, on a facelift, mm -hmm. but they have bad teeth, really bad teeth, what do you think is more important? Wow. I would think that getting their mouth healthy is going to be more important. Because okay. you know what, I mean, we were talking about the inflammatory response with gum disease and the other types of things with decay and stuff like that okay. happen, how it affects your whole mouth. I mean, there's, there's definitely going to be a better response when you're healthy to either recover from surgery or anything like that. So, so the public, what, what should the public ask of, their, of the, dentals, the dentist, the hygienist there? What should they ask? First, they should ask, what can I, you know, what do you have out there for screens? And what I mean by that is, A, we know about gum disease, but my mouth isn't feeling healthy, or it is. Then the next thing we need to talk about is, you know, I like a great smile. How can I, you know, feel better, look better, and have a healthier relationship? And then blending <laughs> onto that, a lot of So the healthier, are, you're talking about the healthier relationship, not just about breath, but you're saying a better smile will give you a better relationship? Oh, yeah. I mean, you really? smile more. I mean, we were talking about earlier how you people will hide their smile. I mean, if you smile back at okay. somebody, you're okay. be happier. It boosts your mood and it boosts, you know, everything else in your life. So I have questions about toothbrushes. 
Okay. Okay. I use that uh, the one that uh, vi what is it called? Uh, Sonicare. Uh, Sonicare. Uh -huh. But then I went to the dentist. I've been to the dentist a long time. I have great teeth. I told you I've been in a long time, I knew and that. they didn't believe me that I don't get my teeth regularly cleaned. But um, make a long story short, they gave me the one that circles, circular, and then it has a cone-shaped head that looks like a dental instrument. And they say that's the one you should use. Have you ever heard of anything like this? Um, I want to say there's a Hydra brush, there's Rotodent, there's a lot it's, of different brushes out there. But what do you there. think? The, the circles or the. The, the circles or the one that's basically the toothbrush head is like the tooth. The, yeah, like the first one that I, that I mentioned. That's the one I use. I mean, what's better? The, the circular one okay. or the one that goes up and down? I would rather see somebody. I mean, the shape of your arch makes a difference. Really? Oh, yeah. The size of the toothbrush head matters. I mean, let's face it, because you know, okay. you might get a toothbrush head that someone might have for a large mouth, and sometimes dentists were guilty of this when we do our auto shipment program, we'll have a one size fits all. Your mouth is not a one size fits all. So whatever they recommend Depend for you. Okay, now based on just looking at me, which one do I need? The cir circular or the one that's by the... <laughs> I haven't seen your, I mean, I see your smile, so I haven't really seen what your arches okay. look like. I mean, unless... It has to do with the arch? Oh, I, I recommend that on the arch. I mean, I always look at it from a patient's standpoint, like how, do you have your wisdom teeth? Don't you have your wisdom teeth? How far Is back... Is it true if you, you have veneers, you don't have to brush them because they don't stain? You told me there was somebody that doesn't brush. Earlier, I met a dentist, by the yeah. way, said that he hasn't brushed in 25 years and, and flossing could kill you. That's what he said, and he said because he said animals in the wild don't brush; they have great teeth. It's only when humans get them as pets that they have bad teeth. He said it was based on diet. He said he doesn't want to do anything with a brush that can break that mucosal barrier that can cause Is he bleeding. Married, Randy? Uh, no, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but it closed. sounded good. It, it, it sounds great, you know. I mean, <laughs> okay, okay. I just had to ask that question, you know. So a good smile could be the answer to anybody's problems. Absolutely. Part. I mean, it makes you it makes you happier. Um, the people around you. I mean, it's almost like anything. People will say, you know, happiness is contagious. And then on the flip side of the scale, obviously, if you're not happy, then you know it's like a negative energy around people. So, I mean, you just know you smile a lot, and you can just see the yeah. response of the people around here in the studio. It's great. So okay. yeah. Now with him um, flossing, that's another thing. I mean, 44 percent of our two surfaces are in between the teeth. So I mean. <laughs> You're kidding what are we going to do? You're That's saying huge. that half of the tooth surface yeah. is in between the teeth. I don't in believe that. I don't believe that. 40%? I'm telling you. That can't be. It is. <laughs> can't so what be. are you going to do with it? And a lot of people say, I don't like to floss. I don't, I'm, trust me, I don't like to floss. I do it. You floss all the way in the back? I do, yes. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. But here's the deal. Do you, you use uh, do individual it. floss or you use those little things? I was a floss snob where I would have just one type of floss, but now I've really learned it just I'm just grateful to find something. So I mean I always So what do you use back to my original question? <laughs> I use either floss uh, that's got either a floss pick, floss floss either. picks. Yes. I'll usually and you use even the back? Picks. I've never done the back of my Yeah. Flossing. Or I've used um, the water pick, which is a water flosser now. So there's really? different Yeah, so just shoots water. Mm -hmm. That sounds like the way to go. It's great. I mean, you just have to know how to use it because, you know, again, You have to know how to use the water pick? It's pretty easy, isn't it? You would think so. You just squirt it in your mouth. You would think so. But then it goes back to, you know, I mean, some people really need some guidance with it. And so we are Is this what you talk it. about all the time, by the way, when you're <laughs> out and about? I get asked more in the relationship aspect of the smile when I'm out and about. I mean, dentistry is, you know, we can call it whatever you want to. People say, like, I don't like going, but as soon as I'll sit next to somebody on the plane or as soon as I'm, you know, next to somebody, they'll like, give a great smile. What, what is it? It always comes up. Some guys actually out. say you have a great smile? Yes. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. So interesting. it opens up a topic. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's dentistry really is fun. It's just making it fun. You know, okay. it's like anything. You can you can be next to somebody. But you always, whenever you get in a conversation in a plane or wherever, you talk about the relationship? Yes. How it affects your relationship? That's always where you go? People will ask me, well, usually it goes from the health standpoint because I'm doing like research or something for a program. And of course, there will be pictures. So I almost uh, feel bad for my seatmates because I'll have slides or, or pictures up where they can see your... The, the oral cavity or your mouth. So it's just one of those things are like, well, what do you do for a living? And I tell them and I start talking about their health and then they'll say, you know, my breath is bad here or there, you know, can you recommend something? So that's where, you know, that just opens up the conversation. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, you need some rescue 911 products for your breath. How smile. often do people really need to go to the dentist? They really should go twice a year. Twice a year? Yes, twice a year. I mean, at least. How do you pick a dentist, by the way? Now, I would recommend them actually interview your dentist. I mean, this is something, really? yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are so many things out there now that are advanced, but yet a lot of people, because we have that perception where, you know, we've got so many continuing education programs, why are we not 
asking more questions of our hygienists and dentists. For example, what do you screen for this? A lot of people, you know, intraoral cameras are huge. And digital, a lot of people have digital radiographs versus the other radiographs, you know, that we used to yeah, use. Yeah. A lot of people say, well, I don't want the radiation. You know, I don't want to glow in the dark or I don't want this or that. We should interview the dentist because... Do you have a checklist? I mean, because we don't even know what to ask. I mean, do you have a checklist? Yes, I do have a checklist. If they visit your website, you have a checklist of what to ask what the to dentist. Ask. And yeah. look at their smile. You say. Look at their smile. If they have a dingy what smile, them, what do you do? Leave? <laughs> no, seriously. You shouldn't leave. No, because we shouldn't assume just because they don't have white teeth or they don't have an aligned or a straight smile that they're not healthy. Okay. You know, you can't ever make that assumption. Maybe to them, they're happy. You know, as long as they're healthy, that's the point. Okay, good. You know, really. Well, look. Now we're out of time. Final message. You know, a, a consumer is watching this. Go to your dentist. Find out if you have gum disease. Mm -hmm. Right defined by this infection underneath your gums. Yes. They could scrape it out or they could laser it out. Mm -hmm. And their teeth will get stronger, they'll get healthier, the bad breath may go away, no more bleeding gums, all those things. All those things. You'll it, feel better. And your relationships you'll will be look better. better and your you life will, will be fantastic. You'll have no more problems. Absolutely. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Very thank interesting. You, Randy. And if they want to see your weekly it's like a video blog, what yeah. is it? Tell me about that. How do they go there? It's Hump Day Happenings. It's Anastasia's Hump Day Happenings. Go to YouTube. Okay. Subscribe or you can go to my website and find out. Okay, good. Thanks again. Thank you. You'll watch the Wellness Hour. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.